nuclear operative game mode is now more common. The nuclear operative game mode has a 25% chance of occurring, syndicates has a 70% chance, and now zombies has a 5% chance. Meaning now zombies is more rare, and this gives players more of a chance to actually play nukies and learn how to do it, rather than it being once in a lifetime opportunity like it was before. The objective to ensure somebody's death has been changed. Now the game will consider them dead if they do not escape on the emergency shuttle. That might sound a little odd, but it's very common that somebody that you have to kill works in a department, such as like engineering, and they may have literally flung themselves off the station when they quit the game, and they're gonna live indefinitely, and there is zero chance you could ever complete your objective because you could just never find them. There are also new syndicate objectives added to the game, and uh, this one's a little bit hard to show, but there's basically just objectives now where you just have to kill a certain head specifically. So instead of just like steal the captain's ID, there's now an objective to kill the captain, and that goes for every single head. And it is a higher weighted difficulty, so that means you shouldn't really get things like steal the nuke disc and kill the captain, because they're both higher uh, risk objectives. But either way, it's more variety and should encourage more drama. This one's a little harder to show, and I'm not going to show it all because it would take 25 minutes. But armor across the board has been changed. However, the biggest changes I will just mention right here. Security armor has been vastly changed. The default gear now for security is called an armor vest. It is a standard type 1 armor vest that provides decent protection against most damages. So now, instead of providing 60% pierce, it only provides 30, 30, 30, 20. And still has explosion resist. And every helmet in the game pretty much was nerfed except syndicate stuff. Rather than 20% blunt slash pierce, it's only 10% of each. And now it also resists a little bit of heat. But either way, this makes officers significantly squishier than they used to be. Which is something that syndicates are going to get their hands on. However, a bulletproof vest exists now, which is a type 3 heavy bulletproof vest that excels in protecting the wearer against traditional projectile weaponry. Like, don't say it really... It's not really that it exists. It's that it has the old stats where it's... 60% pierce, but it's actually uh, better against explosions, but it sucks against everything else. So putting this on if you're in a laser fight is a mistake. So their armor is a little bit more specialized, or if you want to be general, you're not that protected, but it's still better than nothing. And I'm not going to cover every armor change, like I said. Tons can now be injected with plasma, and if an officer tries to turn on their baton, they will explode and take significant damage. Also worth mentioning from the explosion is items protected by the tiles no longer are destroyed. So for example, this pipe was hidden under the tile, meaning that before it most likely would have been destroyed, but however the tile took the damage and it saved the pipe. This makes explosions, again, a little less useful and it feels like explosions have been getting less useful overall, but it's still good for engineering because it was annoying when wires underneath tiles just exploded, but the tile was fine. A medicated suture and regenerative mesh were added to the game. They are essentially brute packs, but twice as good, and ointments, but twice as good. In order to make regenerative mesh, you need a full stack of ointment, and a piece of alloy, 50 units of dermaline, 50 units of signate, and one cloth. And they must be microwaved. As you can see with 10 seconds, it pops out the 10 regenerative mesh. And in order to make the medicated suture, you need a poppy, a full stack of bruise packs, one cloth, 50 units of space acillin, and 50 units of tran acid. And then also for this one, you just cook it for 10 seconds and you'll have a full stack of 10 medicated sutures. It is a lot of work and it requires botany to uh, help you with this and it requires chemistry. But again, there's 100 full healing in one stack rather than 50. So there's definitely time to be saved there and it's effective. Also, medicated sutures completely stop bleeding, so that is also worth mentioning. Air tanks, like the oxygen tanks, have had their capacity reduced by quite a lot. Before, it was only the non-filled ones that got changed, so most air tanks you would find were already filled, so they were basically unaffected. Now, you might actually run out of air using a big tank, but they'll still last a while, but just be cautious that you can't run an entire shift on it without having to refill it. Nuki bundles have received slight tweaks. The China-like bundle is surprisingly cheaper. The Bulldog now contains one extra magazine. And the L6 Saw is 10 TC cheaper, making it a more likely option to be seen. Also, not in the same PR, but related, the Syndicate Zombie Bundle is back, and I'll segue into that. The Syndicate Zombie Bundle can be purchased again, and there has been some big changes to how this all works. So Romerol now causes a zombie infection. 
instead of corpium. Corpium is just straight up gone. And the way to cure zombieism is ambuzol. And ambuzol plus is a way to prevent getting infected at all. It is a vaccine, essentially. Also in the zombie bundle is a matiba, which comes with 60 shots of incendiary rounds, which on its own is uh, pretty significant because uh, those got buffed pretty hard and they do quite interesting damage. Ambuzol can be made simply with Dilavine, Ammonia, and Blood. Ambuzol Plus can only be made if you have zombie blood. I'm not going to show the recipes entirely because you can just look it up in the guidebook and that will just extend the length for no real benefit. Animal Husbandry was added to the game and basically the essence of it is is that as long as there are two compatible animals together they will produce offspring basically like Minecraft is probably the best way to explain it. As long as they are fed and have their upkeep managed they will have offspring. The price of all the gun crates have pretty much been tripled. Uh, the reason for this is is that you could get a serious amount of firepower just from doing a singular expedition more than most security would even have so it was overtuned and uh, also worth mentioning the uh, EVA bundle is only 5k now and not 10k or I think it was 9k but uh, either way it's actually a bit more affordable. The Syndicate Sponge Box has been added to the game. It is a 6 telecrystal purchase. It's a box containing 6 Syndicate Sponges disguised as, disguised as monkey cubes. These cubes turn into a variety of angry wildlife after coming into contact with water. If you purchase it, you'll get a monkey cube box, and they even read like monkey cubes. However, if you spray it with water, it'll turn into a mob that does not have allegiance to you. And in this example, it is a space bear. Fire anomalies can no longer be contained through a box like they used to be able to. The fire will actually spread around the area, so you just can't wall them in as easily. As you can see, the explosion there was rather massive and would not have been contained by a small square. And the last thing I'm going to cover for the week is mobs have had a quality of life change. You can no longer bite yourself, which was extremely easy to do, especially on the bigger mobs such as like a burrower. And most mobs have also received a right-click function attack for ease of use. Of course, I don't cover everything in a week. There's often too much stuff in a week for me to realistically cover. However, I want to thank all of our maintainers and contributors for their great work to the game and keeping all the stuff added to the game and up to date, as well as polished. I will slowly scroll through the change log so you can get a look at things yourself in case you can't get in game to look at the change log or you just cannot access the Discord. There were a bunch of other things, just like clothing, like the Syndicate clothing is uh, really cool looking, and I just didn't want to cover it because that'd be like 15, 20 sprites, and you'll see them yourself. And they also don't really need explained. Yeah, that is all I got for now, and thank you for watching.